Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. I hope you're having a wonderful day. A little overcast in the Mile High City today, but it's much better than it had been. We actually have a little bit of blue skies. There have been so much smoke lately and air pollution. It's really nice that it's getting better. This guy wants to get over, so I'm moving. Anyway, welcome to the show today. We are going to be reviewing a 1968 Westinghouse show and tell children's turntable. This guy's like, what are you doing? You have no idea, buddy. And it, it should be pretty cool. So join me. You're not going to want to miss this. Welcome to Recordology. Okay, guys. So it was on a fairly recent trip to the antique store that I came across one of these cool looking record programs, very, you know, 60s, 70s looking, show and tell picture sound program, GE, fairy tales and cartoon series, ST120, Red Riding Hood, yada, yada, yada. But I'm looking at this device. I'm like, that's cool. It's kind of like a television set. This one says youth electronics. It's got some sort of a screen. So I'm thinking like, is this sort of a book and record kind of thing? There's a phonograph on the top and what looks like a film strip and on the back different titles you can collect and assumedly images from the program something in like book on tape type of thing and I open it up and there's no book there's a record and I'm like well that's kind of cool that's something I haven't seen before so we've got a record it says General Electric on there 1964 designed exclusively for use with the General Electric show and tell phono viewer but at the same time, it does say 33 and a third. So I'm thinking, well, worst case scenario, you know, you could play it on, you know, a different kind of record player. 1964, Barmore Music, product of Pickwick International. And no book in here whatsoever, but instructions for how to use this thing, which apparently they refer to as a key. And it's kind of shaped like a key, but it's a piece of cardboard with a film strip in it. And actually, is this plastic? This is plastic. I think some of them might be cardboard and some of them plastic. But there's like these gear or these uh, kind of cogs or whatever you call it, notches on the back and a piece of 16 millimeter film. And on there are images. Let's see if we can. Okay. So you can see the images there. Looks like they're upside down, probably inverted. Kind of, you know, red tint which is pretty common for film from the 60s and 70s that hasn't been you know restored or whatnot but i thought this is really cool so not having a show and tell and having never seen one you know in the wild before anywhere i'm like well we'll go ahead and purchase the record i think it was five dollars and we picked up one or two of them and we decided you know if we ever come across uh one of these devices you know we could do a show on it It'd be a lot of fun well that actually happened this week I found one. And not only that, I believe I got a really good deal on it because here it is. I paid less than $20 for this. It seems like they go for anywhere from like, you know, maybe 40, 50 bucks range. Not super common, but if you want to find one, you can go on eBay and find one. This one popped up locally and I'm like, yes, this is what I've been looking for. This will make for a very interesting show. At least I hope so. Only you could be the judge of that. But they made a range of these. Initially, they were branded as uh, General Electric or Westinghouse. And then eventually, they were uh, made under a different brand. Youth Electronics, I think, was one of the brands that they did. But it was, you know, all the same basic idea. This one is, I believe, a 1968 model. They were made from, like, 64 to 74, about a 10-year run. And... The original ones were four speed. So you could actually do 16 RPM, 45, 33, and 78, which would be a great multifunction record player by itself, let alone the visual aspect, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, but this one is only two speeds. This is 45 and 33. It's got a neutral spot, which is where that should be right there. So what we're gonna do is this. We're gonna review this item. We're gonna test it out and we're going to also take a look inside and see uh, kind of how it works. And yes, if you haven't done so already, um, I know people are going to be tempted to comment, well, Tecmo already did a video on this, and I know that. 
pretty much any video Techmon's already done a video on. So we're going to forget about Techmon's video. We're going to focus on Recordology's video today. Okay? Okay, cool. So this is it. It's the most, you know, Partridge Family slash, um, you know, Brady Bunch thing you've ever seen. This personifies the late 60s in terms of color and design. It's pretty lightweight. It's hollow plastic. It's, you know, you can almost comfortably lift it with one hand. It was smaller in person than I thought it was going to be, but it was advertised as fully functional. And not only that, it came with a bunch of programs, which we're going to look at here in a minute. In fact, we're going to test one out um, at the end of the show. So stay tuned for that. But let's take a look at the item itself kind of up close, see what we got. Start at the top here with a turntable. Now we've got a familiar sort of E-clip on there, so we should be able to pop that off and have a look underneath. I'm assuming this is going to be an idler drive unit, which is why it has the neutral sort of clutch position. And what I thought were gonna be rubber nubs on here, actually kind of hard plastic. Maybe one, eh, they got a little bit of tack to them. Let me take that back. They probably were softer a long time ago, but that's that. And there's the speed control down there. So we get the lighting a little better there. 45 neutral and 33. There's the branding show and tell phono viewer over here. Uh, we have the tone arm, which looks like it's mashed down there, but it's not. It's actually geniusly designed to, you know, snap into this little notch here. Under the tone arm, we have the film strip, um, place where you insert the little film strip, a focus adjustment, and then this tone arm, which rotates vertical, which is awesome. If you wanted to, you know, replace a cartridge on this or, you know, do any maintenance on there, it's a spring tensioned tone arm. There's the cartridge. The cartridge and the stylus actually work, which is amazing. This came off uh, the bottom the day I got it. So the glue just, you know, kind of pooped out. But you can see there, General Electric model A651D. Maybe the 65 is the year. Maybe this is a 1965 edition. I can't make any sense of that being a date code 2233D unless it's like the 22nd week. I, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, this UL uh, strip, I, I think it's historic in nature, so I didn't want to throw it away. Uh, let's look at the front of it. On the front of it, obviously, you have the screen, which looks like about a 9-inch screen, if I had to guess. 4 by 3 aspect ratio. Obviously, kids looking at this are going to be like, it's like a TV. I have my own TV. You know, to have that independence, to be able to have your own TV or your own phonograph, your own radio, I think was probably pretty attractive. Sorry for the background noise. The bird is kind of going crazy there. He's making a lot of weird noises, so I apologize for that. We've got a lightsaber mode, which turns off the uh, the projection inside and allows you just to listen to the phonograph, which obviously can be used independent of this system. And this is the on and off and volume switch. The speaker is right there. If you tilt it up, you can see the speaker holes. Under, isn't it an interesting pattern to do it like that instead of like a circle? Isn't that weird? Looking on the bottom here, there is something <laughs> loose inside. We'll probably come across whatever that is, but everything's in pretty good shape. Interesting, this molded angled piece here. I'm not sure exactly what that is. There is a place to coil the uh, power cable back here, although I've just been wrapping it separately, which is what the previous owner did as well. This one has nothing on the side. Some of the later models, the one I think Tecmoan had, you could actually open a panel on the side and it would project on a wall. This one does not have that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the phonograph part of it. The one thing is this is pretty dim. So in order to see the images, we're gonna to have to be in a dark room. Uh, it's just a very dim bulb. So I don't know, I, th I had thoughts like, well, you could put like a newer LED bulb light source in there of some, somehow, you know, do it that way, which yeah, you could, but you know, keeping it all original, it's functional. We're just gonna to need to go into a dark room to see the images. That being said, you know, we can absolutely, you know, demonstrate the phonograph part. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this guy in and set that off to the side. In the meantime, I wanna show you the titles that I have. So this is the one that we had bought. I think I actually showed this in the haul video, so it's probably not coming as a complete surprise. All of them have this, you know, record. Yeah, because I already put a sleeve on this. All of them have the uh, show and tell branded record, the uh, key. Is this one plastic as well? I don't know why I thought they were cardboard. Let me set those down over there. Now this one's plastic too. This one is plastic, so 
Uh, but anyway, so that lives in there like that. So we have, and they were licensed to, you know, all sorts of brands. So another brilliant licensing arrangement with a lot of these. This is obviously a Disney one, Dumbo. Uh, they sold for 99 cents each or five for four ninety nine. They came out with quite a few titles. This had a couple of, of, this one is like empty. I'm glad this is a duplicate, thankfully. So I already have it, but it came with this device and it was an empty cover, but I happened to already have a copy of that. It happened with a couple of these. Most of them have everything in them. This is a Jack and the Beanstalk. We've got this title right here, 101 Dalmatians. Is that really the same exact title? No, that one is Dumbo. This one is Snow White. So it's not the exact same one. Puss in Boots. Really cool stuff. I guess the Disney series ones all had the same cover. This one's Cinderella. Christmas programs, you know me, I'm not gonna pass that up, that's awesome. The Fourth Wise Man, the Pied Piper, and this is another empty one, Peter Rabbit. So definitely a good start. At the Denver Antique Gallery, for anybody that's local and wants to know, they're selling these, they have, this person that's selling them probably has 100, 150, like wrapped in cellophane, I mean, they're not brand new, you know, new old stock or anything, but they're in great condition for $5 each. So if you want to pick up some titles, if you still have your show and tell, or you found one, or you're going to find one, you know, there you go. All right, let's go ahead and test out the phonograph part. It's a pretty basic setup. Now it looks like there was one of those adapters that kind of rotates up like on my Fisher price, judging by these slots right here. Mine does not, no, no longer has that. So you could use a 45 adapter if you needed to. The show and tell discs themselves, have the smaller hole and they run at 33 RPM. So it's not gonna be an issue for us. Rotating that switch on the right. And I guess I'll go ahead and put the uh, film in too. So in order to uh, control the tone arm, there's no lift in the back or the front. You just kind of push on the front and pop it out of this little notch. And then you can place it on the record right there. We're in the neutral position, flipping it to 33 will start. And then you put the film in and it will display on the front of the device on the screen. And what's cool is it automatically advances the slides as you go. So again, it's really bright out and you can't see the screen with the daylight. So we're gonna listen now and then later we're gonna go in the dark and check out the screen. But here's what it sounds like. Okay, so. It's audible, it's functional, it's not the clearest sounding turntable of all time. I still think it's amazing the fact that the slides stay in sync with the program. I think that's phenomenal. Let's listen to this side as well. They called her Cinderella because she sat by the cinders in the fireplace to keep warm. Day and night she toiled for her cruel stepmother and two lazy stepdaughters. But do you suppose Cinderella was sad? Well, not at all. She made friends with the birds who flew to her windowsill with the chicken. Now, I imagine as a kid, this would be super cool. This would be like, you got to come over to my house. I have the coolest thing. I have this show and tell phonograph and you know film viewer it's kind of like a viewmaster record player mashup very cool device this was before my time i have no memories of these i learned about it you know by researching for this show like i was describing earlier it's got kind of a hefty grinding not grinding noise but kind of a ying 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 sound you can hear that maybe and that's to me that's telling me that there's an idler wheel under that platter so without further ado let's take a look inside and see how she works by the way, I hope you're having a wonderful and blessed day. I wanted to say thank you so much for joining me today, making time to watch and hang out together as we discover something else cool in the world of, you know, electronics and phonographs specifically. Okay, first thing before we do any under the hood stuff, we're going to unplug it. Again, I have to say, don't try this at home. I can avoid the warranty. I doubt there is one, but you could shock yourself. You could hurt yourself, so... That being said, I'm going to do it anyway. Um, so we're gonna pop off this clip. As you know, with my experience with these clips, I lose them every single time almost. So don't let it go flying. 
Some people have said just keep it taped down when you're removing it, or at least, you know, keep your finger on it. So removing the clip, have I already lost it? <laughs> it disappeared into this black and white sort of granite. All right, I'll find it. I know I'll find it. It wouldn't be a show if I didn't lose the circlip. So let's go ahead and remove the platter or attempt to. Yeah, oh boy, it's dirty under there. So this is a plastic platter. I did do a you know cursory cleanup, by the way. Just as we suspected, it is an idler drive turntable. Let's get a closer look at that. Pretty dusty, but I would be too if I was that old. And yeah, there's the lever to control the speed, the neutral positioning. And basically, you know, we've talked about idler drive turntables before, but the essence of it is, is there is what's, you know, essentially a capstan or a motor shaft, which is this pole right here. That's connected to the motor. That's connected, not the wheel. The wheel's not, this is like a pinch roller on a tape deck. This is completely neutral. It just spins. Um, when you use the clutch lever right here to position it, it essentially pushes against the drive shaft and the outer rim of the platter to give it propulsion, to rotate that tone arm, or to rotate the uh, platter. And you'll notice here, I'm gonna zoom in, You'll notice that the shaft has different, it's really dirty when you zoom in like that. You'll notice that this shaft has different widths. It's wider at the bottom than it is at the top. So depending on, you know, if it's in the 45 mode, which it is now, or we go up here to the 33 RPM mode, the gear ratio dictates the speed. And that is a rubber wheel. Again, it's like a pinch roller. It's, it's not driving it. It's simply a pr applying pressure between the motor drive shaft and the rim. When we put it in neutral, it backs off, so it's just floating freely right there. Which you want to keep, if you have any turntable, which a lot of turntables of this era, not just children's ones, but professional ones, uh, were this type of drive mechanism, which are fine, they're good. A lot of people love them. A lot of the duels have this. You want to keep it in a neutral position when not in use, because if it lives pushing against that drive shaft long enough, or against the uh, outside of the platter, it can flatten that rubber. You can see a little rubber's worn off. No big surprise there. So you don't wanna leave it you know, engaged. You wanna put it in the neutral mode when it's in storage so you don't get any flat sides to that rubber. So I'm gonna take a Clorox wipe now and kind of give it a once over cleaning. We're not gonna be able to get any deeper into the unit on top. So what we're gonna do is take that screw, dry, that screw off the bottom and kind of go in from the front to kind of see how it works. Okay, so I gave it a, you know, I spent too much time on it, but I cleaned it up quite a bit. There's a lot of hair in this thing, kind of disturbing. Uh, cleaned out the inside. A lot of this uh, discoloration wouldn't come out. And even though it looks like there's some residue back here, this is completely smooth. So again, for what it is, a children's phonograph. I don't like it when people call stuff like this a toy, like toy phonograph. I think that's unnecessarily condescending but for what it is I think this will be acceptable and I'm gonna go ahead and pop the clip back on here which will hold things in place securely all right that was probably the easiest removal and replacement of an e-clip I've ever done in my life so we now know how it works we've tested it we've looked at it from all sides let's see what's inside it and open it up took a little doing but I got the top off I have not done anything but loosen it so I have not looked inside here let's see how it works here's the big reveal uh, interesting okay so I wonder okay so we got a little looks like a two by four speaker there that would explain that strange angle and we can just pop these speaker wire clips off it looks like we have a bug carcass there and some dust Another code there, I'm not sure if that's a date code or whatnot, but I think I've successfully removed it without breaking it. And to that, I am going to thumb my nose at Matt Techmoan because he couldn't get his open. Now he added a different version, slightly, so maybe yeah, I'll give him credit for that. But I just, want to I just want to point it out to you guys. Just kidding. I actually very much appreciated the advice that Techmoan has given me on starting this channel and you know, and he's, uh, helped, he's encouraged me quite a bit along the way. So, um, in fact, I might even link to his video if you want to see more about this device 
I think I'll do that in the description below. But right now, let's look a little closer in this one. Okay, I've decided to go ahead and turn on the light ring because it was getting a little dark in there. We can see a pretty primitive circuit board here. <laughs> Some black tape. Um, you can see a piece of tape sort of holding this switch together here, which is pretty well dried out. It's like a scotch tape. So inside, essentially what you have is a mirror, which is dusty and needs to be cleaned off, which we'll take care of that with some Windex. And then looking a little bit further, you see some of the turntable mechanism itself. And there we've got a gear that transfers power to the platter, following that gear back over here. Yeah, I mean, you can see some capacitors on the back of that board. It's pretty much an empty box, but it kind of has to be because that film, which let's go ahead and insert the film so you can see where that goes. So as we insert the film, that's where it goes. So you can tell that it's being projected through this lens and there's a little mirror, like a one inch by one inch square mirror. I don't know if you can see that. Welcome to the inside of the show and tell. So the lens, as you can see right there, is projecting onto this mirror, which is at an angle. And then that mirror hits this mirror, which increases the image so that it can, you know, hit that screen. And again, this will advance the film. And I don't believe it's intelligently synced. I believe it's just on a timer. So I believe these stories are created so that, you know, after a certain amount of time, this thing will advance slides up through the device and project a new image. Got a lot of dust bunnies and things down here, but I don't think it'll be too hard to clean. Kind of a crusty, dusty mirror. Just a little bit more visibility as to the inner workings. I think I find this stuff fascinating, even if I don't personally understand what everything does. Overall, I feel like this is in fantastic condition. It was probably stored for a long, long, long time. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it another cursory clean out and we will fire it up in the dark and actually experience the on-screen image. Okay, definitely a lot cleaner. Maybe not perfect, but a massive improvement. Still, you know, remarkably clean to begin with. By the way, I did shake loose whatever was rattling around. It was uh, one of the little plastic tabs, which as far as I could tell was non-functional. This is a little more concerning. It looks like a shutter or something. I'm gonna hold on to this stuff, obviously, in case it turns out to be an important part, but I believe these were already loose when, when I documented it was working fine. And I was about to play the program, as I've been saying I was going to do, and I noticed there's two distinct sides to the record. Shame on me for not noticing this prior, but it looks like one side has, you know, the music from the program or just sort of incidental audio. And then on this side, it has the program, and you'll notice that we've got a directional arrow. So I am assuming that this is where you place the phonograph needle. This particular one has a nice uh, law or a wide run in lead in space. So that'll be good. And then turning it on, we are going to be enjoying this picture sound program. The fourth wise man. Let's look at the instructions. Move the turntable around. Don't go too fast. Look at the little window. I don't see a little window. And wait for the black line to show up and then stop turning when the black line is in the window. Well, mine does not have that. So I'm going to point the red arrow at the needle because that makes sense to me. Oh, there's another one on here. Oops. There's another one right there. That's really peculiar. Okay, so I'm just going to wing it. I mean, this is a low stakes gamble, I would say. <laughs> We're going to push this all the way in, that's for sure. I don't have a little window to line up a little black line, so we're just going to wing it and see what happens. Long ago in Bethlehem, long ago a child was born. Long ago in Bethlehem, on the first Christmas morn. Angel voices filled the air. Shepherds heard and followed them. In the heavens overhead shone the star of Bethlehem. Wise men in a distant land saw the star and said, 
we know that now at last a king is born, prophesied from long ago. Stir the servants from their beds, and the camel train be stirred. Fetch the gifts of precious stones, gifts of frankincense and fur. Sound the trumpet and the bells, drummer, beat upon your drum. Infant king of Bethlehem, see the kings of Araby come. One, two, three, the wise men go where the Jordan waters flow. Caravan of gifts they bring for the newborn Christ the King. Far away, your fourth wise men, far the father falls behind. Seeing not the distant star, but the lame, the sick, and blind. Beggars three have raised their cry, pity us our misery. From his gifts for Christ he gives, coins of silver, one, two, three. Says his little camel then, far behind the rest are we. Now three blind men cry for alms, gold he gives them, one, two, three. Down the road the wise man rides, pausing often on his way, giving freely of his gifts, giving freely all the day. Sadly now his camel sighs, nothing have we left, says she. Then the wise man sees a child, Father, mother, one, two, three. Says the wise man, all is gone, all I brought for Christ the King. I must turn from Bethlehem, since I have no gifts to bring. Suddenly a heavenly light floods the road and all around. Angel voices from on high fill the air with heavenly sound. Says the mother, go in peace, gift of gifts has he from you, gift of love for other men, you have seen the Christ child too. One, two, three, the wise men ride through the desert side by side, eyes upon a distant star, shining, shining from afar. Okay, so there it is, you guys. Um, turn this off it was interesting i mean it was still fairly dim no big surprise but still you know with the lights completely off in your room as a child i think that'd be pretty cool and you know no kid had a television in his room back then so to have you know something that was kind of like a tv i could definitely see the novelty there um you could notice that the slides were having a hard time advancing all the way so Eventually, I was kind of helping them along a little bit. I think the biggest thing that determines whether or not a particular program is going to be enjoyable or not is the condition of the film strip, even more so than the record, because these were pretty well faded in red, which is pretty typical of film that's this old. So if you found one where the film was still pretty fresh and the colors were good, I think that that would immensely, immensely help. But regardless... It's a cool novelty today, and back in the day, it was a very cool tech toy. Dang it, I called it a toy. It was a very cool tech thing for the children of the mid to late 60s. So hopefully you enjoyed this as much as I did. Okay, guys, and that's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so very much. Hit the thumbs up button if you haven't done so already, as well as subscribe. But that's going to do it for today, guys. Happy record hunting. We'll see you next time.